There's so much to do in western New York, especially in the summertime. Today we're hitching a ride with Buffalo Pedal Tours, taking in the scenery and craft beer scene of the City of Good Neighbors. Also in this episode, we'll be visiting a farm in Niagara County. Should we take this to that? Well, that's pretty far. We'll see how much energy we have. Join us for Brewed in New York, Buffalo, Niagara. Discover even more local foods and beverages at Taste New York locations throughout the state. Whether you're at a state park, sporting event, or stopping at one of our New York welcome centers, it's never been easier to choose local and buy New York. Unilam, a family-owned business in upstate New York serving the building industry for over a century. You can spot Unilam's finely crafted timber products in breweries throughout New York State and beyond. Learn more at Unilam.com. 1886 Malt House proudly partnering with New York's finest grain growers to produce locally sourced, high-quality malt for farm and craft breweries. The Northeast Hop Alliance. Farmers, brewers, and educators working together to provide high-quality, locally grown hops to craft beer consumers in New York and the Northeast. Like many people, when you hear the word buffalo, the first thing that comes to mind might be this. But while Buffalonians do love a good blizzard, you'd have to in order to live that close to the Great Lakes, tourists flock to Greater Niagara in all four seasons. Of course, Niagara Falls wows over eight million visitors each year, but you've also got Letchworth State Park, known as the Grand Canyon of the East. And the Iroquois National Wildlife Refuge, one of the best kept secrets of Western New York. Buffalo proper is a richly historic city with stunning architecture. That's why when we set out to explore the breweries of Buffalo, we did it in a way that would truly allow us to appreciate the urban landscape. That beer bike was so much fun. It was. What a great way to travel between Buffalo breweries. I also burned a lot of calories that day. Check it out. Maya, have you ever been to Big Ditch Brewing Company before? Not yet. Oh, you should be really excited because they have got some amazing beer there. I went last night and had the deep cut double IPA. It's dank, it's juicy, it tastes like melon, so good. That sounds wonderful. Well, I can't wait. I'm gonna head there right after this. Thanks for the recommendation. The Big Ditch, a surprising name for a brewery perhaps, but I knew there would be a good story behind it. So I talked with co-founder Matt Kahn to dig up the details. What inspired the name? The name Big Ditch actually pays homage to the Erie Canal. Back in the early 1800s, this giant waterway was proposed to link all of New York State together. It was something that people thought was almost ludicrous. Back then, there was no construction equipment. It was all pretty much dug by hand. So because of how large this project was and the amount of work that would go into it, nobody believed it, it would actually get built. And so it became known as Clinton's Ditch. For Governor DeWitt Clinton, who was New York State's governor at the time, he had championed this project. Well, it took eight years, and when it was done, it was sort of the engineering accomplishment of its time and a, and a catalyst for, for Buffalo's growth, actually. And so we were inspired by the story of what hard work accomplished for the city of Buffalo. And then, because of that, named our, our brewery Big Ditch Brewing Company. The Big Ditch theme is fully integrated in the design of this brewery's high-end taproom. Larger-than-life imagery of the Erie Canal provides a constant reminder of the project's historic innovation. This engineering wonder is particularly inspirational to the brewery's founders, whose scientific background has been critical to their success. Tell me a little bit about the origin story of this brewery. Myself and my partner, Corey Catalano, who's our head brewer, um, we both used to work in the biotech industry. And we used to get these buckets of raw material we would use in our product and use the material and just throw away the bucket. And uh, Corey sort of had the idea that it's a pretty nice bucket. It's actually a food grade bucket. I bet I could turn this into a fermenter and make beer in it. Making beer is an art and a science. Um, but it is quite a bit of science. It's biology and chemistry. That's what we're good at. We are working in a lab. 
From there, I, I thought about it, you know, maybe we could turn this into a business. I knew that craft beer was growing like crazy all over the country, but yet Buffalo only had three craft breweries at the time. How about opening a brewery? So, open a brewery they did. But there were a few steps between bucket fermentation and downtown destination. Matt and Corey connected with business savvy partners, Wes Froebel and Paula Scallo, to build a brew pub dedicated to quality and poised for growth. When Matt and Corey first approached me, it was obvious that these guys were passionate about the beer. The four of us, when we teamed up, we found that our, our philosophies and our interests were very much aligned. They are very detail-oriented. They will produce a pilot batch of beer over and over and over again until we get it just right before we put it on our full production system and sell it to the customers. I think the most important thing in uh, the craft brewing, or really any industry where you're making a product, that people expect to get the same thing every time. So consistency, and uh, a lot of that comes from just measuring everything you potentially can and then keeping uh, everything that you have within your control. We're constantly recording everything. We have a, a ton of documentation just to, to make every single batch of beer. We do some things in the brewery that probably other breweries don't really do because we're trying to make the beer better. The scientific approach to brewing has been a winning formula for Big Ditch. This is evident not only in the crowds that flock to their upscale tap room, but the popularity of their signature beers. Right now, my favorite's probably Deep Cut, which is our uh, double IPA. And then Excavator is our rye brown ale. It's an American brown ale, but we add rye malt to it, which really helps dry out the finish on a, what would otherwise be a very sweet, malty profile beer. Our beers have come across to the local Buffalo consumers uh, very well. We've been awarded recently a silver medal for our double IPA deep cut. Uh, we've also been named uh, the best craft brewer in New York State at the 2016 Tap New York Festival. The demand for our beer has been so great that we're going to triple the capacity of our existing brewery from 5,000 barrels a year to 15,000 barrels per year. We're also going to be putting in a canning line so we can service the market in some uh, off-premise sales as well. Pretty exciting. But no matter how big the Big Ditch grows, the founders of this brewery are determined to remain firmly entrenched in their hometown. Why Buffalo? Why did you decide to open your brewery here? This is the only place we ever wanted to open our brewery. We wanted to do something great for Buffalo. Buffalo also has a really rich history with regards to beer as well. There used to be 35 breweries in the Buffalo city limits alone. And so we wanted to add to that and we've helped to you know, revitalize the area a little bit. How do you engage with local businesses and your communities around you? you know, Buffalo is known as a city of good neighbors. Many of the local businesses around the area are also our customers, so we have a very good relationship with many of them. We use different kinds of local ingredients in our food here prepared for our brew pub, and we enjoyed the same for our beer as well. You'll find that the terroir of what you'll get locally is different from what you can get around the country, so you might find some unique flavor profiles. And then we're also helping out another local vendor. What makes you proud about being part of the New York State brewery community? The kinds of breweries that are opening and the quality of beer being made by New York is getting better all the time. So we're obviously proud to be part of a state that's just making really good beer. Buffalo has also come a really long way in just a short amount of time, and we feel like we're, we're part of leading that charge. And so we're really happy to do that for Buffalo and for the state of New York. More and more people are coming to appreciate locally crafted beer. And lucky for us, there are also more and more ways to be able to enjoy it responsibly, like taking a guided pedal tour or hopping on public transportation. In this show, we encourage you to go out and explore New York breweries. But just as a reminder, when you do, never drink and drive. Plan ahead, be smart, and keep us all safe. After the trip to Big Ditch, it was back on the beer bike to explore downtown Buffalo. I asked our tour guide, Ken, about what inspired him to create this unique beer tourism experience. Ken, tell us a little bit about Buffalo Pedal Tours. Well, Buffalo Pedal Tours was started in September of 2014. We've grown into the biggest beer bike company in the Northeast. We do all kinds of tours. We do an architectural tour called Beer and Architecture, which is very, very popular. We also do progressive dinners and we do pub crawls. How many tours do you run in a day? On a weekend, we can run up to 22 tours in a day. Wow. 
I took a long walk around the city yesterday, but just on this tour, because we go so much further, I've seen so much of the city, it's gorgeous. Yeah, we have a lot of history here. You know, it's really cool because we share the history with the whole state. Because of the Erie Canal, which linked the Hudson River to Buffalo, the city just exploded in the late 19th century. And you just look at our buildings, we have the evidence to show what a great city we are. Maya and I definitely felt the pride that went into the architecture we saw on our downtown tour. First, we passed the Liberty Building. It was originally built as a bank and features two miniature Statue of Liberty replicas on its roof, between which Didier Paquette completed a famous tightrope walk in 2010. Then we rode by one of the most recognizable buildings on the Buffalo skyline, City Hall. This Art Deco building was constructed in the 1920s to help the city deal with the explosive population growth that had occurred over previous decades. But the most memorable stretch was riding down Main Street, seeing the iconic Shays Theater, which over its history has hosted acts as diverse as Frank Sinatra and the Marx Brothers to Elvis Costello. For a city of its size, Buffalo is truly an architectural treasure trove. It's enough to make you stop and think, except we weren't allowed to hold up traffic. Craft 101. Even if you're new to craft beer, you probably know the two main ingredients in this beloved beverage are water and grain. And grain is what transforms that colorless water into a rainbow of gold and brown hues. The best grains for beer are cereal grains like barley, wheat, and rye. But barley is far and away the fan favorite of brewers everywhere. Why? Well, Barley is a hardy crop that can grow in fairly rough conditions. Here in New York, that is certainly helpful. It's also packed with starch, and starch is what converts to alcohol. So yeah, that's important too. Barley is an ancient grain and was first cultivated about 10,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent. A plus if you remember that from grade school. And today, almost all the barley produced around the world goes into brewing beer. Whether barley, wheat, or rye, all grains must be malted before they can be used to make beer. Malting involves a process of wetting, aerating, and drying the grains in order to get them to germinate, but germinate just enough to produce the enzymes needed to break down the grain's own starch content during brewing. Once the grains have sprouted, they're placed in a kiln to stop germinating and dry out. Okay, now germinate. Okay, now stop. Talk about mixed signals. Then, just like coffee beans, they can be toasted or roasted to bring up deeper flavor and color. At the brewery, malted grain is crushed in the mill and then soaked in hot water in a vessel called a mash tun. This pulls out all the sugars, which can be converted to alcohol. At this point, the grain's work is done. The spent grain is pulled from the mash tun and can be composted or used to feed farm animals. Phew, I'm spent just talking about it. I'd like to propose a toast to those hard-working grains. The Brewers Association defines craft beer in terms of the brewers who make it. Small, independent, traditional. But any brewer knows that to brew a truly great craft beer, you need to start with the best ingredients. We're here today at Niagara Malt, learning what it takes to grow the finest hops and grain for New York's craft brewers. My name is Bob Johnson. I am co-owner and head maltster of Niagara Malt. We also grow hops, so kind of a dual operation. I consider myself a artisanal malt house. I limit my batches to one ton at a time so I can give them a fairly intensive personal care. Every kernel gets seen by me at some point. I've always been interested in sustainable agriculture. I'm fairly confident that we can produce quality hops organically grown. I was lucky enough to get a personal tour of Niagara Malt's one and a half acre hop yard, which lies on a property that was originally sited for a vineyard. Bob credits the breeze provided by the sloping land for keeping the fungus at bay. Combining this topographical advantage with innovative farming techniques enables Bob to grow and harvest some of the happiest hops in the state. Your farm looks different than the typical hop farm. Can you tell me about some of the differences? Well, to begin with, uh... I grow on a 10-foot system as opposed to the traditional 18 to 20 feet. Mm -hmm. I use a netting system, about a one-foot grid. After they hit about 10 feet, I'll cut the apical bud off, and that induces lateral branching. Yeah. So it'll begin to fill in along the, uh, the laterals here. So in a couple months, I won't be able to see through this. That is correct. The system I have does have an Achilles heel, and that is it is hand-picked. 
for instance, I have picked cones and they're not quite what I want. They might have a little uh, fungal infection to them or something, so those can be discarded. Where when you have an automatic harvester that most of the tall systems utilize now, they just shoot through and you don't always see what you're getting. So here is a, a good example of sometimes small is better. You can see the little laterals coming out now. Yeah. And you might notice from some small flowers. These are referred to as the hop burr. You want all female flowers. You do not want pollination mm -hmm. um, because then you would get seed set and that would uh, alter the flavor of the cone plus the cone has oily seeds in them. Well, I could talk about hops all day, but there's a lot more that you do here. I would love to see the malting facility. Well, it's just a short walk away. Let's do it. Bob uses a multi-purpose one-ton vessel to malt his grains. This uni-malter is capable of carrying out all the critical phases of malting, from steeping and germination to aeration and kilning in a single tank. We're inside the malt house now, and Bob is going to show me some grains that are in the process of being malted. I'm really excited to learn this process more. What, what do you have here? This, this is destined to be a Pilsner malt. That uh, Pilsner malts will be the lightest roasts that I do. Mm -hmm. And if you roasted it more, could you turn this into another? Oh yeah, each incremental increase in temperature will produce um, maybe slightly more pronounced biscuit aromas, mm -hmm. biscuit flavor, as well as uh, darkening. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. So what's okay. the next, what do we have to do? Well, the next step, um, I will go into the malt tank. You're gonna hop right in. I'm gonna hop right in. Ugh. Oh man, I can tell already. This is, this is the hard work here. Oh yes it is. As a matter of fact, once I started this actively, I dropped my gym membership. I, I get a sufficient upper body workout here. But you know, I, I could use some help. Would like to come up? Yeah. Whoa. The grains currently in Bob's tank have already gone through germination and are almost ready to be roasted. But they tend to stick together, so they need to be broken up so that the air can get to them. There you go and shake it, make sure, see how it fluffs right up? Yeah, yeah. That's the goal, you want it to get fluffy and you know, allow the air to flow through as evenly and thoroughly as possible. Hey, maybe I'll be able to cancel my gym membership. Well, you'll have to take bigger scoop loads than that, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Craft brewers are realizing that New York malt is as good, if not better, than some of the more mass-produced malts. Many of the larger malt houses will contract for their grain. They'll specify the varieties of grain that they want, kind of mix it as it comes in. It's going to be very homogeneous because they want consistency. I, for instance, will select one to several different varieties of malting barley for their characteristics. And instead of blending, I will maintain and alter the conditions of my malting specifically for that variety. I malt for the characteristics of the grain. Bob's single batch approach has made his artisanal ingredients increasingly popular among brewers across the state and beyond, especially those looking to celebrate the natural diversity of each harvest. And with many Buffalo-based breweries using Niagara malt to differentiate their recipes, Bob is proud to be a part of the unique flavor of Western New York. Well, Matt, I've got a treat for you. Uh, we're holding two beers from the Buffalo Brewers series made with Niagara Malt. It's a collaboration project between Community Beer Works, Big Ditch, and Resurgence Breweries in Buffalo. Oh, that's great. So that's made out of the same malt that is sitting in these bags over here. That is correct. Amazing. Well, let's stop talking about it and let's drink them. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Oh, that's refreshing. It's very, very nice and exactly what I want to drink after some hard, hard work. Oh, drink to that. So listen, thank you so much for sharing these beers and for letting me jump into the kiln and showing me around the place. It's been a pleasure. My trip to Niagara Malt was really eye-opening. 
What a great way to get a first-hand understanding of the hard work that goes into growing beer ingredients. I bet. I can't believe you jumped into that tank. I know, right? And that beer that we sampled was actually a collaboration beer from several Buffalo breweries, including Community Beer Works. I'm so glad you mentioned them because, in fact, they are the last stop on our tour. Community Beer Works co-founder Ethan Cox is a self-proclaimed beer geek who, in addition to running a successful nano brewery, literally helped write the book on Buffalo's brewing history. The opening of the Erie Canal had a profound impact on the growth of Buffalo, not just in brewing, but really in all domains. What that did is it led to the growth of the grain elevators. In fact, the first grain elevator was invented in Buffalo by a guy named Joseph Dart. Suddenly, you could take these huge shipments of grain, you could store them at this midway point between the Midwest, where it was coming from, and the East, where it needed to go. And what happened is that people realized, well, if the grain is stopping anyway, why don't I buy some of it, malt it, and then sell that east or west from here? And that contributed quite a bit to the economy of Buffalo and to the notoriety of Buffalo. I mean, we were really very definitely the grain capital of the U.S. for a long time. Still standing on Buffalo's waterfront are the majestic grain silos of yesteryear, commonly called Silo City. There's a ton of them kind of in one area. And these are massive, massive concrete structures. You can't appreciate just the enormity of this industrial architecture. It's, it's actually really gorgeous. A lot of those grain elevators are not really in use anymore. And so for a lot of Buffalonians, they almost have become something like an eyesore. What's nice about the Buffalo of today is that we're starting to rethink that. And we realize that these are actually cultural assets of our industrial past, and we need to find ways to reuse them and preserve them. In fact, there's even a, a brewery going into one, and they're going to use an old grain silo and brew in it, which I think is pretty cool. A proud member of the Buffalo beer community, Ethan doesn't hesitate to support other up-and-coming brewers. He even sits on the board of the New York State Brewers Association, looking out for the interests of small-scale breweries in western New York like his own. Community Beer Works. The idea behind community and the name Community Beer Works comes from at least three different levels of community that we think are important. I mean, the very first level is the community within the company. The next level, though, of community is the community of people who are into beer and beer enthusiasts. And then at the top level, it's the community of Buffalo or the neighborhood right around us. I think when people are given the choice, they're going to choose something that's local, it's fresh, and they know the people who make it and they know who stands behind it. And I think that's the allure of small breweries, especially ones as small as ours. As much as you might like that new uh, beer that you just got from that national craft company, you know, you can't go meet anybody who had anything to do with that beer. But if you buy a Community Beer Works uh, beer at a restaurant or bar nearby, you can come down to the brewery when we're open. And there's a very good chance that person who actually made that beer is right there behind the bar serving it to you as well. But the noble goal of fostering a sense of community and place through brewing is arguably only as good as the beer that brings people together. Fortunately, this brewery delivers on both fronts, with popular ales that help fulfill a mission to in beer Buffalo. We make a number of different beers uh, over the course of time that we've been open. I'm sure we've made well over 100 or 150 different beers, but we do have some flagship beers. Our most popular of those is probably Frank, which is our American Pale Ale. Uh, people do usually ask, why is it named Frank? It's really great when someone named Frank walks in because they're always pretty excited that we named a beer after them. In our mind, Frank is actually this quintessential Buffalo character. Everybody knows a Frank, even if their Frank is named Stan or Tony, you know the guy we're talking about. Another beer that we've been making since the beginning is our brown ale, it's called uh, The Whale. That name is just for fun. Rudy, who was our brewer at the beginning, that was a homebrew recipe that he brought, and when he was making it as a homebrewer, he was also calling it The Whale. We didn't see any reason to stop calling it that. And while this award-winning brewery started on a nano scale with a Kickstarter budget, it has so quickly become a beloved neighborhood crossroads that it seems destined for greater influence. New York State is the home of some of the best breweries in America, and we're honored to be part of that community. And the support we get from even the larger breweries in New York State, they want to see us grow like we want to see them grow. Our expansion plans at this moment are really exciting for us because we have found a good fit for us. So the place that we are moving to, it's on the west side of Buffalo still, which we feel is kind of important for us personally, and it's also a big part of our brand. 
And it ties into the brewing history of Buffalo because the facility is going to be in a building that was erected in 1880 as one of Buffalo's malt houses. So I'm beyond excited about what we're doing. I think it's safe to say Community Beer Works is feeling the Buffalo. And so are we after this final stop on our pedal tour. Speaking of buff, you should see what this ride did for our cabs. Well, that was fun, but how about we park this thing and go get ourselves a beer? Definitely, and some buffalo wings. Okay, we're in Buffalo, so they're just called chicken wings here. Oh, uh, gotcha. All right. Well, don't forget to visit our website, brewedinnewyorkshow.com, to learn more about the beer tourism in the Buffalo Niagara region. Be sure to follow us on social media for fun facts and updates. Until next time, thanks for watching.